Hey folks, welcome back. Today we're going to continue on with this uh, four foot straight edge. We've got the first two sides done, now we're going to do the angle. But before that, I wanted to give you an update on some of the projects around. Now I had a comment from a guy that's, uh, you know, as I asked you last week if you were subscribed. And the reason I asked you if you were subscribed was, if you're not, and you write me a comment, and I reply to it, you won't ever know that I replied back. And that happens a lot. So just as an effort to get you to reply back to my reply, or even read it, when I ask you a question, I, I just wanted to see if you would subscribe. I wasn't begging you to subscribe. And there's only been one time that I really, really, really kind of crossed the line a little bit real quick oh uh before we do that geez steve what the heck man that thing sign banner big enough what sign that one subscribe Jeez, wait a minute what the what the heck no there's nothing got another one over there no hey you one back from there where we just came from you turning into a subscriber whore aren't you me? Yes, You're you. You're saying me? Yes. I told you you was a subscriber before. Uh, Don, I've got a present for you. <laughs> oh, what am I? There you go. There's you a nice little what, necklace. What am I? Yeah. Am I cowbell? I'm a cow. I want to know where the hell I'm you not, are at every cow. moment. I don't trust you enough. I don't know. Forget no, Don, 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 Don. Oh. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. It's like buying a kid a drum set. Right. But, as you might have noticed, I don't ask all the time. I don't tell you to hit the like button. It's up to you if you want to do it or not. You're grown-ups. But one of the things that he said also got to me. He says, I do too many things in not a linear fashion. And it makes him lose interest. My reply to that is, have you ever heard of playlists? Now playlists, and I put everything I do into a list on a specific machine. There's one on the Bridgeport, there's one on the 10EE. If you want to just go step by step, just follow the playlist. I do things here by myself. I don't have a bunch of college kids coming in here. I don't have people giving me stuff all the time to make it happen. Everything's funded out of my pocket. And my pocket's not that deep. And us great big YouTube stars, last month I made $143 off of YouTube. Heck, that didn't even pay for the, 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 the drinks I was drinking during the 20 hours of editing. So I don't make money off of this. I do it because I love to. And I love to t show people how they can do things. We have all the tools in the world in this country. So I'm just showing you how I do it on a budget. Anyway, as I say, I do things the way I do it in the way that makes it easy for me to do them. Like I say, we've got a 10EE under reconstruction, a massive rebuild of it. I've got the uh, Bridgeport underway, another massive rebuild of it from scraping everything to planing it. And I do things in groups. That mill needed planing. We're doing that. I needed a tool to check the mill. We're making a tool to do that. The 10EE needs the bed ground. It's about seven thousandths of an inch off. And I've come up way, with a way to do that that I can afford and make it almost as perfect. And it may even help you guys later down the road because what I'm going to do is come up with a method to do it inside or what is it, in situ, where we, where I hope I can uh, grind that bed in place. To make that happen, I needed some cast iron rails that we can bolt onto the side. I couldn't afford that $800 for the, the, the cast iron 
uh, what do they call it? Durabar. It was a lot of money just for that. I'm making some rails. They're going to be about four and a half feet long, three inches tall, an inch and a half thick, and have a 90 degree uh, point on top of them. The Durabar for that, and I couldn't even come close, it was $800. So, I reached out to Clark over at Windy Hill Foundry, and the first thing out of his mouth was, how much does it weigh? And I said, well, I'll have to figure it up. So the best I can do is it's going to come up to about 56 pounds. And he said, that's a problem. He says, uh, I'm a one-person shop, and I can't handle that much at once. And then he said something that was music to my ears. Could you come help me? Man, I dang near jumped in the truck and drove over there right now. But come September, the end of September, excuse me, I'm going to make start making the patterns next week. And we will drive over to Mississippi and uh, hopefully show you a little bit of what we do to make those rails for the 10EE. Now, another part of the 10EE is once I grind them, I need to set the saddle on top of it so that it's perfect. And then I'd have to scrape that and all this stuff. I've got to get the, the height back up. Once I take it off the rails and underneath the saddle, I must build that all back. Now, turkite is one of the things that's most commonly used. So I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use Mowgli's. Now Mowgli's, see here, is a powder. Yeah, well this is the epoxy adhesive. I got online and found a really good place. In fact, I ordered a bunch of stuff for it. These are injectors. What I'm going to do is, once I grind the rails on that bed, I'm going to then place the saddle on top of it after milling out enough to make a good pad, critically align the saddle, and then mix Mogulis and inject it in there. And so that once that's done, I just have to take it off, scrape some oil pockets, and we got a perfect, perfect saddle to bed fit. I've got all kinds of stuff that came in. And this is the Devit, D-E-V-I-T-T, -T, machinery company where I bought all this stuff. They're a, 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 a DAPRA dealer. They uh, sell scrapers and blades and anything and everything you need to do for scraping. Here's some 500 gram injectors. These are 100 big syringe type injectors. What else do we got? Ah, this is the next thing that will be done on some of the machines. Now, not all of them I'm going to put Mogulis. This is a sheet of Turkite, and I will use this to build up parts on the bridge port. Expensive stuff. This is a 24 by uh, 12 inch 0.045 thickness and it was like $180. Everything I'm laying out here is about $600. It's going to take me quite a few months with YouTube pay. <laughs> now these are Mogulish shim stocks and what you do is when you're setting up your um, your saddle you glue a little piece of this shim stock onto that saddle and that keeps it at the right height. You get everything perfect, shim it up just right, and then inject the Mowgli's. So these are helpful for lining. Glue. This is a Mowgli's kit. This is a 400 gram kit and they sell it in kit size like this. You can buy more. I had to buy a little scale for it. And the best part of the whole box is they sent me these little bitty, here's a little treat for being an awesome customer. Thank you, Devitt Machinery Company. 
And it's been so jolly to have you here as a customer. Thank you. They don't know I'm diabetic, but I'll have to cheat a little, I guess. Anyway, that's all coming up for the 10 EE. I also started working on the electronics for the 10 EE, and I've ordered one of the main motherboard or, or drive controllers for it, and it's going to take about four more weeks for it to get here. That's another reason I do things out of order in these videos, because I have to wait on parts and stuff. I have to wait on the money to get the parts and stuff, and I have to let my wife know that I'm doing it. That's the hardest part of them all. Anyway, I'm sorry if I do things out of order. Uh, it's sort of like not so much a specific machine with my videos, it's what I do in my shop. And heck, next week we may dig a ditch. Who knows?